Hello everyone, this is ARG and it's been a cool minute. Um, so I've been gone for a while. Hey Kim, uh, actually I did, I trimmed that a little bit. Um, it's a little bit more presentable, so... Uh, yeah, I'm back. It's been about six months, I think, since I last streamed. I needed to take a break. Um, mental health can be a mother fudge sickler. So <clears throat> I needed to take a break. I, I am back. I'm going to be doing some franchise key manager. And I'm only going to be streaming one game at a time. I think that's what got me last time is that I was trying to stream so many games at once and I started to feel burnt out and absolutely nothing felt fun anymore. So I decided to take a break. But uh, I started to get the itch again. I wanted to play some franchise hockey manager and it's always more fun when I'm surrounded by people that uh, want to watch me and everything and discuss hockey and whatnot. So, uh, here I am. Hey, well, thank you and uh, welcome aboard. I believe that's the first time that you've been on stream. So, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, since it's been a while, please let me know if the volumes are not calibrated right, like my voice be, uh, versus the background music and everything. Um, I think I got it pretty okay to how it used to be, but uh, it's been so long, so please let me know. Uh, I will adjust uh, on the fly. So, uh, <clears throat> those that have been following me for a while know that as a kid I was a Quebec Nordiques fan, huge Quebec Nordiques fan, but I was also uh, loving the waiters. Yeah, it's gonna be it's the same for me, right? Uh, is everybody knows like my 40s is the 90s because that's really when I really got into hockey so starting with uh, with the waiters when they first got into the league in 1979 is going to be kind of a challenge for me in itself uh, because in 1979 I was exactly one year old so obviously I didn't know nothing about nothing so uh, that's gonna be kind of a challenge but yeah so as I was saying I was a huge Quebec Nordics fan but I always liked the waiters I always liked their logo I always liked their uh, jerseys uh, I, I thought that the word waiters was really cool but then again you know I was just a kid not knowing a whole lot of English or nothing so I thought it was pretty cool so <clears throat> I was thinking what would be a cool challenge to do with the Artford waiters now sadly uh, all of the park developments, the you know the historical challenge that's built into the 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 game for the waiters is kind of lame. Uh, it's a reference to the movie Mall Rats, uh, but you know the challenge is only for a single season where you have to use the waiters in a particular season and beat the Vancouver Canucks. So I thought about hey you know let's try to do something with you know the waiters that would be kind of challenging and kind of fun at least that's that that's the goal right uh, to have fun so i'm going to lay down what the challenge is going to be this year now every year i have a challenge now last year i had fj contribute to part of the challenge this time it's all me so uh we already discussed you know the the start of the 80s is definitely not my strength when it comes to knowing everything about hockey so that's going to be kind of a challenge in itself for that but here's the challenge so i'm starting when the artford waiters joined the league in 1979 i'm going to have a lot of good opposition there's a lot of really good teams the islanders should be really good uh the canadians should be pretty good uh, the Oilers should be getting pretty good eventually as well so i'm gonna have a lot of challenge so the challenge is to win the stanley cup back to back before artford moves to Car carolina now can i do it maybe that, that, that that's the goal uh, but to make the challenge a little bit harder uh, i'm also going to add the following items to my challenge the first one is going to be uh, 
that the computer is going to do all of my drafts. So long gone the days where I know which player is more more than likely going to become a superstar and draft him and you know run away with it. So the computer is going to do my draft. That's that 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 can prove to be pretty challenging in itself. Second the thing that I'm adding uh, is that at the start of every season, I'm going to run a random number generator. I am the adequate random gamer after all. Uh, and I'm going to run uh, numbers between 1 and 99. So <clears throat> the number that I get, if I have a player that wears that number uh, for that particular season, I absolutely have to trade or get, do everything in my power to trade. I mean, if it's a scrub that nobody wants, I mean, at that point, let, let, let's not get too upset. But, you know, if it's a superstar, I might need to trade him for lesser pieces or something like that. So I already did that for this particular season and I rolled 24. I have a player that has number 24. He's not all that great. So we're good for now. So that's going to be pretty much the challenge. Um, <clears throat> if you have a little item you want to add to the challenge, uh, I might consider it, but I think that it's going to be pretty challenging in itself as it is. All right. <clears throat> all right so the, that's the email that you get whenever you create a, you know, a, a new league and everything. It tells you all of the things that have changed. So here we go. All right. Now nobody said anything about the volume, so I'm guessing I, I'm guessing I'm good before I start, you know, looking at players and stuff. So now now's that now now would be a perfect time to tell me, dude, your volume calibrating skills fucking suck. All right. So I haven't really moved around in the new version of the game, so I'm seeing that it's very similar. I know that they have added stuff and everything, uh, but you know the layout and everything doesn't look like it's all that uh, different. So I sh shouldn't feel too lost. I did take a look at my team to see what's going on over here. Uh, it looks like in net I should be okay. Uh, you know, I'm gonna have... Uh, Al Smith and John Garrett, so I'm not too worried uh, with goaltenders, at least for a couple of years. Uh, three and a half star goaltending, unless things change direct drastically in that version of the game, that should keep me afloat for a while, as we've seen so many times in the past with half star goaltenders winning the Vizina and whatnot. Uh, I'm a little bit more worried about my D. <laughs> so I was looking at my D and uh, uh, I had I had regrets, so um, of course I'm gonna have Mark Howe. So uh, Mark Howe is gonna be my star, and he, sh he should be good for quite a few years. So with him, I'm not too worried. I'm gonna have Gordy Roberts. I'm not. I don't think that he's gonna be all that great for me. Uh, again, I the one thing I didn't mention. I have the game engine that's going to be taking care of the development and all of that good stuff. So we might have surprises. We might have deceptions and whatnot. Wayne Gretzky might become a scrub. No, never happens. Uh, but yeah. So other than that, on D, I really don't have a whole lot. So the D is going to be a point of focus for sure. Uh, that's something I'm going to look into improving because aside from Roberts and Mark Howe, I really don't have all that much. Up front, we're not all that great either, uh, but it's still a little bit better than uh, on D. Kind of weak on the wings, don't have a lot of uh, great... Uh, wingers aside from uh, Blaine Stockton so he should be pretty good for at least a few years he's 26 looks like he has the potential to do a little bit but uh, I'm looking at his points totals and it's not all that high like from previous season so I'm hoping that he can kind of have a good season and of course I have Gordy out right yes yes FG I, I am back but uh, you already knew that because I sent you a message yes the beard is still there Got trimmed about three weeks ago. Try to uh, try to not look like a, a prison escapee anymore. At least that's how my girlfriend likes to call me. Uh, well, she likes it, but I don't know. what the what the hell do I know? Anyway, so I was saying, I, of course, I have Gordy out, but he's 51 years old, so we shouldn't like count on him for all too much. It work's been great. Uh, still working from home. Uh, I'm lucky uh, to uh, to be able to do that. 
so it's kind of slow right now it's always slow around the holidays i work for the government so you know all of those uh, government executives i'll take off like for a long time around the holidays and whatnot so I'm not going to go through, you know, every single player one by one, but that's about what we're looking at here is that we should have decent, not great, but decent goaltending. Our defense is going to make me cry in my sleep and our offense. I, I'm not sure what to expect from our offense. We definitely need a few more wingers. I think at center, I should be pretty good. I do have a uh, Keon, but he's 39, so he's not going to be here for very long. Uh, Mike Rogers should be good for a little bit. Um, then this guy, I'm not too sure, Andre Lacroix, but not too sure about him. Uh, so we, we definitely have some work to do here. Uh, we're going to need to build the waiters to respectability. And uh, I'm not too sure what's go what route we're going to take for that. Now, one thing uh, is I did mention uh, I have a player with number 24, so that's the number I rolled. So we're going to immediately put this guy, Don Kozak, on trading block now i don't think that i don't think that teams are gonna throw themselves at this offer but uh all right i'm doing my part what are you doing i'm doing my part here all right so so if g did you catch what the chat well i told you what the challenge is already I don't know, uh, the Gordial, uh, Gordial's, uh, Gordial at trick per 60 is not that high. He only had two in his entire career, I think. Two or one, something like that. He really didn't have a whole lot. All right, so uh, as we know with Franchise Hockey Manager, uh, preseason is always seven games. So that's what we got here. So uh, we're going to be playing those things here. Uh, maybe take a look at the standings, right? Because we're way uh, outside of what we're used to see. So it's kind of it's kind of funny to see that like Montreal and Quebec are not in the same uh, conference. So so the Wales conference is Buffalo, Quebec, Minnesota North Stars, Toronto, and Boston, and then Wales has Pit Pittsburgh, uh, us. Uh, the Kings, Montreal, and Detroit. So it sucks for the Kings. Uh, that sh that's a shitty. Uh, travel schedule like they're all the way back west all by themselves with a whole bunch of eastern teams for the most part you know so sucks to be them i guess all right and then the the campbell sorry it was the adams the norris patrick division we have the islanders the capitals the atlanta flames the new york rangers and the philadelphia flyers and the smite division as the oilers jets rockies blues blackhawks and canucks now the way that the playoffs uh work uh soon like yeah i think it's within two or three years from now something like that uh google would answer that with a lot more certainty than me who's been put on the spot right here i do not know the answer on top of my head um so the playoff format is really interesting back then and i really wish the league would go back to that because it's gonna be the top of each division and then the 12 remaining teams are the 12 teams with the most points and then one plays 16 two plays 15 so you can have you can totally have a first round matchup of you know la kings against the montreal canadians you know that's yeah personally i would love that nowadays but you know well you have to create rivalries and everything uh, who knows maybe there would be rivalries that would be built with you know the ottawa senators and the st louis blues who knows i don't know Maybe that's just me. Anyway. <clears throat> oh, by the way, yes, I know that the Suns are playing tonight. And if I'm still streaming, please don't say anything about the game. I will be watching it a little bit later. Oh. Uh, look at FJ that needs to take a crack because his team finally won a game in like what felt like a millennium. So now he has to run his mouth. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so, uh, is there anything that you guys would like for me to go ahead and check before we get into the preseason? 
Oh, one thing I wanted to kind of check is, oh yeah, there's two things that I wanted to do. See, I'm creating work for myself on the fly. All right, so uh, free agent wise, it's very barren. So that's not how I'm going to build my team right now. So, you know, that, that, that's it. Like I'm trying to sort by ability and potential. I mean, that's it, that, that's, that's what we have. The top five, 10 players in the league right now. All right, so we have Wayne Gretzky, Guy Lafa, Marcel Dion, Denis Maroc, Daryl Sittler. Uh, Daryl Sittler, Gilbert Perrault, Danny Potvin, Real Cloutier, Tony Esposito, and Brian Troucher. So those are the top players right now overall. And yeah, it's going to be scary because Wayne Gretzky is 18 years old right now. So yeah, we're going to be seeing a whole lot of him and a whole lot of him being very good. Oh god, Krushensky, I don't know. He sure is. Oh, he's in the Quebec uh, Junior Major League. Oh, no, he was uh, drafted by the Boston Bruins. Okay. Freshly drafted. There you go. All right, so uh, another thing that I wanted to check is I have a guy I can sign. He's not very good. But uh, I'm going to sign him anyway. All right, so Don Nagbar can be signed by me here. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Offer him a contract that adds one guy to the mix. I'm sure they didn't fix it where if the supplementary uh, role is French prospect, they refuse to sign the contract. All right, you should sign. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. Mm -hmm. I think I got all of my settings right as far as, you know, all of that stuff. Like for the, oh yeah. I didn't realize I was in August. I am far, far, far from uh, my first game there. All right, so Steve Vickers has been put on the block by the Rangers. Not gonna, I'm not going to worry about anything like that right now to make a trade before the season unless something falls on my lap, which nothing is going to fall on my lap because the computer only offers you trade offers for players you have on the block, and the only player I have on the block kind of sucks. So I don't think that I'm... You never know. <clears throat> Several, uh, a few iterations ago, um, I got... Uh, I got the computer to offer me Brian Berard for... what? Uh, who was it? Rob Murphy or something on the Sands. That was a steal. So you never know. But uh, I'm not holding my breath right now. So how has everybody been doing? I haven't talked to any of you in like six months, except for FG checked on me uh, about three months ago. <clears throat> All right, the best uh, free agent. Uh, how is Jacques Lemaire a uh, free agent? I didn't see. Oh, I believe that it's from the other window. I don't know why it does that. So if I come here and I look at free agent center, I'm going to see. Yeah, so I could get a 33-year-old Jacques Lemaire on the team. Hmm. That wouldn't hurt.
Oh yeah, Kim. What are you doing in the in the game? What's your main save? You know what? Even though he played with Montreal for so long, I think I'm going to see if I can uh, offer a contract to Jacques Lemaire. Oh, yeah, I guess I can meet his demands, and he wants a no trade clause. That means I'm stuck with him for three years. That should be fine, I think. If you've watched me play this game, I don't play the negotiation game very well. So <laughs> don't expect for me to uh, go and try to, uh, you know, to skim uh, 55 cents out of a player's contract. That's definitely not going to be happening here. So I'm a firm believer in giving the player what they want and move on, especially when there's no salary cap. <clears throat> Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, the, the the Sharks is definitely a team that would need some uh, smart rebuilding right now. I think that they kind of started by getting rid of Brent, Brent Burns, but uh, yeah. All right. Okay, there's uh, ru rumors of a trade for Kurt Bennett. Keith Crowder signs a deal with the Bruins. Looks like an entry-level contract or something like, like that. And Neil Broughton signed with the Minnesota North Stars. Now, Neil Broughton was a star in the 80s and everything. He has a five-star potential. He's 19, so he should be a really good piece for Minnesota for several years. I would say you should give them at least a good 10 years or so. But, you know, the engine might get in the way and uh, take care of that. Oh, I need to fix that. Did I already? I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to do my monthly budget. That's boring. Um, let's take a look here. Oh yeah, financial settings. That 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 looks like something that my assistant uh, absolutely wants to do. I'm a firm believer in making people happy. There you go. You can handle my budget. <clears throat> oh, Jacques Lemaire signed in Vancouver. We didn't get Jacques Lemaire. Well, too late. Oh, well. And then there's been a trade between Toronto and Winnipeg. Bob Neely, the defenseman, was traded to the Jets for Glenn Tomalti. Can't say I'm super familiar with them. And looking at their half star potential and current talent, that probably would explain why. <clears throat> Um, not as much as I used to, FJ, a little bit, um, like enough to know, like, you know, which teams made it to the finals, enough to know that Connor Bedard was as good as, uh, you know, advertised, uh, but if you have specifics, uh, I'm not sure that uh, I would know them. All right, Don Nagbor signed his contract, apparently. Ooh, there's been a trade. Oh, Bill Clement <clears throat> was traded to Minnesota for Kent Eric Henderson. So Bill Clement, the center, two and a half star player, traded for a right winger, two and a half star player as well. Now, Bill Clement was the commentary guy in the NHL games for a while, and he's been, you know, he was a commentator uh, for, was it ESPN, like several years ago? I, I hope I'm not getting that wrong, but uh, he was a commentator for a while. Might still be. <clears throat> I think that it's fair to say that Connor Bedard is probably going to get drafted this year. I, don't, I think that there's a team that's going to take a chance on him. Uh, should we look at the free agents again and see if there's somebody that maybe we we want to uh, to look at? Oh, there's not a whole lot left, huh? Claude Saint Sauveur. That's a very French Canadian name. Jean Carr. Claire, Claire Alexander. Okay. I'll pass. 
us. I'll go with my team and I'll build from there. Um, all right, so Lauren Enning has been put on the block. <clears throat> oh, even in 79, they made barbecues that were too hot to handle for players. So Gavre, Justin Gavremont burnt himself. <clears throat> Oh, there's been a trade between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Nordiques. Dave Dornsife for uh, for Jacques Cusset. So again, a very minor deal. That's why I never heard of those guys. At least Bill Clement, I had heard of him. And I knew he played in the league and everything. Ray Como on the trade block. Oh, oh. All right. All right. We're about to start preseason. The, the stuff is about to start. The real stuff. Oh, we have a trade proposal from the St. Louis Blues. Somebody wants that player that can barely lace a skate, according to his talent. All right, so Bob uh, St. Louis St. Louis has uh, offers from for Bob Murdoch. All right. All right, so St. Louis wants to trade us Gord Bainak for Don Co Now, Bainak is younger and he's a defenseman, so I'm definitely going to look at him. Now, he's an alpha star, so I'm not holding up my breath. But, <clears throat> as you know, uh, what I really look at usually is this ear. That's what I really look at, like those numbers right here. That's what I look uh, above stars rating. And if there's a 10 somewhere in there, then I have faith that the player can at least play on the fourth line or something like that at the NHL level. So, do you have an up? Yeah, so see, he's, oh wait, that's, oh yeah, that's according to the AHL, so, so he has, Yeah, I'm afraid that's gonna go down too much uh, at uh, an NHL level. Can I change that? I don't think so. Yeah, Kimi does, but uh, he's he's in the AHL right now, so those numbers here are according to AHL standards. So if it, if I'm I put him on an NHL squad, like he's not gonna be a 12 year anymore. It's probably gonna be like a nine. I think I'm still willing to take the chance, uh, mostly because a nine I might risk playing him, and there's a chance also that he's 25, so there's a very slight chance that he gets a little bit better enough to put him to a 10. Uh, there's just no guarantees. So, is that something that I want to do? I think that I do. I think I'm gonna chance it. You know what? I, I'm going to complete the trade. I, we're gonna take a chance. We're gonna we're gonna have faith. All right. So I traded my player that I needed to. No, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna make any other trades. That just means that the player that I absolutely needed to, as per my own challenge, I traded. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. Plus D, I need help. So let's now let's take a look and see how bad it is. Now that he's on a, yeah, that's what I thought. Season he's a nine over here. So with some luck, maybe he's gonna get a point at uh, strength or whatever. And maybe that's gonna put him at a 10 and maybe not. The, the other player was probably not gonna play for me anyway. His IR, his IS number was an eight anyway. So he wasn't gonna play for me. So who knows, maybe, we're, maybe we'll get lucky with Gord here. All right, we made our first trade. Then trade superstars. I mean, I did trade Wayne Gretzky to the Toronto Maple Leafs last year. I mean, I have no shame in trading superstars if I have to. 
Um, oh, also to uh, because of my challenge as me trade a player according to their number that I roll and everything. The assistant manager is the one that's uh, assigning numbers so that I don't cheat or anything like that. So wanted to make that clear. All right, we're about to start here. Please set your captain. Oh yeah, I need to do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. All right. All right. So we all know how I do this. All right. So Dave Keon is gonna be my captain. Markow is gonna be an assistant. So is Rickley, who was the captain. So you're getting an alternate. There you go. Okay, I don't care about my tasks here. All right, so we are going to be starting the preseason against the Philadelphia Flyers. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that lineup there in Philadelphia. Do they have any injuries? They do not. All right, so... I'm gonna need to look at the names a lot more than I used to in the 90s. So Phil Meyer, Pete Peters, and Pete Peters should be good. And he's only 22, so he should be good for a while. Uh, on D, they have Norm Barnes, Andre Dupont, which I've heard of before, Jimmy Watson, Ben Wilson, Frank Baith, Bob Daly, Terry Murray, and Mike Busnuk. And then up front they have Bill Barber, Kelly, Brian Propp, Dean, Mel Bridgman, who would become the first GM of the Ottawa Senators and completely bored completely bore the amateur, uh, not the amateur draft, the expansion draft. Uh, Bobby Clark, Ken Linsman, The Rat, uh, McLeish, Paul Ongren, Leach, Vervegard. That's uh, an interesting uh, word to say for me. Uh, Gorens and John Paddock. All right, let's play this game and see what the hell happens. All right, so I'm not setting lines. Uh, again, that might change along the way, but uh, that challenge might take a while to get through. So to save some time, I'm going to continue to have a head coach that takes care of that for me. All right, so as you can see, we don't have a whole lot of crazy talent up front. Why aren't you dressing somebody at right wing you're not even going with seven defensemen you're not a very smart coach we might not stick with you for very long all right pete peters is going to be in net for the philadelphia flyers john garrett in net for the waiters and it is on the way go waiters go Oh, that starts with a 6-1 loss. That's that, that's not great. All right. So we were completely outshot 41-16 to in that one. Brian Propp was the first star of the game. He had a goal and two assists. Bobby Clark was the second star with two goals. And Wilson was the third star with an assist. No, I don't think season one is going to go all that great either, Kim. Uh, yeah, we do agree on that point here. All right, so 6,391 people in attendance for the first game ever for the Waiters as part of an NHL team, even though it's a preseason game. The Flyers scored three goals in the first period. It was already 3 nothing after one. And then they added another goal in the second period, and then Mike Antonovic scored from Andre Lacroix and Bob Stevenson. It was 4-1 after two. Uh, oh, some face punching happened in the second period. You know uh, that uh, I know that you guys like that. So Nick Fotsiu and Paul Ongren uh, punched each other's faces, and then Rickley and Mel Bridgman. And then in the third period, the Flyers added two more goals. That was a six-one trouncing of the Hartford Waiters. Oh, we're starting with the spicy stuff. First, first day of simulation in the preseason, and some spicy stuff happens in the NHL. Wayne Gretzky is out for three months. He has a fractured finger. There you go. That's going to derail his career right there. That finger is never gonna heal, and it's seventy-nine. That's not like the medicine that we have today and everything. Wayne Gretzky might never make it. Good game for Mark Napier. He had 
A hat trick against the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, Dennis Merrick was extended by the Capitals for five years. That's pretty good. And there's been a trade between the Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leafs, Don Marcotte, uh, for Dan Maloney. Eh, looks like a fairly, uh, on the surface, it looks like a fairly even trade. Yeah, exactly. Too fragile. Going to be a bust. <clears throat> All right, so second game of the preseason as us go to LA to play against the Kings. All right, we're going to take a look at the Kings in 79. Of course, no Wayne Gretzky for them over there at, at that time. All right, so they have Ron Graham and Mario Lessard in net. And then they have Doug Allward, Richard Mulhern, Brad Selwood, Rick Hampton, Barry Gibbs, Randy Mainry. Rob Palmer and Randy Old on D. Then up front they have Steve Johnson, Charlie Simmer, I know, uh, Bert Wilson, Sil Haps, Marcel Dion, of course, where one of the greatest players to play the game to never win the Stanley Cup. Uh, Butch Goring, I know, of course, uh, Andre Saint Laurent, Steve Carlson, Vic Vanaski, Dave Garner, Mike Murphy. Dave Taylor, of course, Ellie King's legend, and Glenn Goldup. <clears throat> right, so they, it looks like they have a fairly balanced team. Should be an interesting. Uh... Oh, look at us! We're we're putting uh, players in uh, all the spots for this game, but we're not playing any of our good players. Oh no, we're not. Look at that! Nobody plays here. Oh. Let's go ahead and continue. I'll go and check something real quick. All right, John Garrett in net for the Waiters and Mario Lessard in net for the Kings. Go Waiters, go! Oh, we lost 4-2. We had mostly our reserve players playing. Uh, we were out shot 27 to 26 in that one. Wilson was the first star with a goal and an assist. Johnson, the second star with a goal and an assist for us. And then gold up two assist, third star for the Kings. Uh, Kings scored first in the first. It was one nothing. Ellie Kings. There was a fight between Randy Old and Ray Newfold. And in the second period, the Kings made it three nothing. And some more fighting. Randy Olt again against Jeff Brubaker. And then Randy Olt again against Ray Newfield. Wow, Randy Olt is a brute. All right, Bernie Johnson opened up the scoring for us in the third. Made it 3-1 with a power play goal from Al Sims and Brian Hill. And then Steve Alley from Bernie Johnson and Al Angsleben. Whew, that's a little difficult for me to say. It was 3-2, made things interesting, but then late in the period, the Kings scored, made it 4-2, and that was it. And Randy Olt with his fourth fight of the game against Al Ag Angsleben. Whew. Randy Olt must have been uh, quite the prolific fighter. Four fights in the same preseason game. That guy wants to make a spot for himself in the lineup with his fists. And, you know rugged brawniness good game for Pierre Larouche he had three goals and an assist against the Vancouver Canucks strong night for Larry Robinson in that same game of course Larry Robinson was uh, one of the greatest defensemen of ever uh, he had five assists that's why that's okay so I, w I was making a comment about how my coach was dumb because he wasn't, you know, feeling that that's because we're in 79 and the number of players that you dress for a game is not 20, it's 19. That's why. You gotta follow the game. I wasn't doing that. All right. So from Ellie to Boston the next day, we're going to be playing against the Boston Bruins, who should have a pretty good team here, yeah. All right, so Jerry Cheevers and Gilles Gilberg in net, Mike Milbury uh, on D with Brad Park, uh, Dick Redman, Rick Smith, Brad McCrimmon as a 20-year-old, Ray Bork as an 18-year-old, uh, Gary Doak, 
Cashman, Wayne Cashman, Stan Jonathan, Al Sickard, John Winisick, Dan Maloney, Peter McNabb, Bob Miller, Jean Rattel, near the end of his career, Craig McTavish as a 21 year old, uh, Barry Peterson, Rick Middleton, Terry O'Reilly, Bobby Schmaltz, Dwight Foster, and Keith Crowder that uh, we saw with that they signed. So, yeah, they have a pretty decent uh, lineup there. Probably will be a, t a tough game again. It looks like we're going a little bit more with uh, some of our better players. So, Stockton is playing, Mike Rogers, Keon, Gordial. So, who knows? Mark Howe is playing. All right, Al Smith in net for us. Jerry Cheevers in net for the Boston Bruins. Go, Waiters. Let's win our first preseason game here. A tie, three-three tie. I'll take it. Tie on the road against the Bruins at the Old Garden. Like that was not a friendly arena to play in. Yeah, I'll take it. And we were outshot thirty to twenty-one. Al Secord was the first star of the game. He had a goal and an assist. Blaine Stockton was the second star with two goals, and then Smith for Boston with the the assist for the third star. So Boston scored first in the first period. Then there was a fight between Brad Park and Charles Luxa. Uh, Tim Sheehy scored for us an assisted tight game, then Boston uh, took the lead 2-1, then Blaine Stockton scored on the power play from Mike Rogers and Jordy Douglas, 2-2 two -two after 2, oh god, a lot of, <laughs> oh dear god, a whole lot of fighting in the second as well, so Stan Jonathan with Gardy Roberts, Terry O'Reilly with Nick Fotheu, Dan Maloney and Charles Luxa fought as well, and then a couple minors. Then Boston took the lead in the third for the third time in the game. It was 3-2. Then Blaine Stockton on the power play again from Mike Rogers and Gordy Howe. It was tied at three and nobody scored in overtime. Of course, we have... Oh, wait. Were there even or overtimes in... I don't even think there were overtimes in 1979. There weren't. There is no, like, OT uh, summary here. So there weren't even overtimes back then. So it's a tie, 3-3. Three, three. Lenny McDonald has a memorable game as a player for the Maple Leafs. A goal and four assists against the Atlanta Flames, a franchise with whom he's going to go win the Stanley Cup later in his career in real life. The Detroit may move JP LeBlanc. Uh, he's put on the block one star player. We're not going to go too crazy here. Oh, the scouting update from Bill Denis, the best free agents currently available to us. So Claude saint Sauveur is the best. That says a lot. All right, so um, fourth preseason game is going to be in Detroit against the Red Wings. Let's take a look at them. Oh, you have a few more players there. All right, so Al Jensen in net with Roji Vachon. Um, Dave Anson, Jim Korn, Barry Long, Perry Miller, Tommy Bergman, Jean Emil, Bogus Fistrick, Willie Huber, Reed Larson, Dan LeBreton, George Lyle, John Grudnick, Errol Thompson, Paul Woods, Joe Patterson, Pete Mahovlich, Dale McCourt, Vaclav Nadomansky, Ogbone, Walton, LeBlanc, Mike Folino, Danny Bolzik, and Brian Johnson. All right. Let's see if we can beat them. John Garrett in net for us. Al Jensen in net for the Red Wings here. Oh, we got massacred 8-3. It's going to be a long season in Hartford. I hope you folks are patient. I, I know I am. I don't know about you. I don't know how you're going to feel watching me an hour here and there just to see if I can put that thing together properly. More than likely I will, but yeah, we're going to need some patience here. All right, we were outshot 41-38. to 38. Pete Maovlich was the first star of the game. He had a goal and two assists. Nedamansky was the second star with three assists. And LaBreton, third star with two goals and an assist. 
Red Wings scored four straight goals in the first period, then Mike Rogers scored from Gordy Roberts and Bob Stevenson. It was 4-1 Detroit after one. There, were, there was a fighting major between Boris Fistrick and Bill Bennett. Then in the second period, Detroit made it 5-1, then it was 5-2 with Bob Stevenson's goal from Jordy Douglas and Al Agslebin. 5-2 after two. Some more fighting with Uber and Rick Hodgson. That happened in the second. Third period, Detroit scored two more goals. Then Rick Clay scored from Gordy Howe and Bill Bennett. It was 7-3 Detroit and they added one more goal. And that's the end of it. Not a, not a great showing here. Oh. Tom Price was traded to the Flames for Dale Lewis. Not a, not a, not a trade that's uh, overly significant. All right, and now we are hosting the Bruins, so we played them already. I'm not gonna look at their roster again, but uh, we are playing the Bruins again. Uh, let's see if we can do better than a than a than a tie against them. All right. Jerry Cheever is in net for Boston, Al Smith in net for us. Go Waiters, go. Oh, we lost 5 nothing. <clears throat> we were outshot 27-26 in that one. Jerry Cheevers was the first out of the game. He had the shutout, 26 uh, saves. Rick Middleton was the second star with two assists. And Don Maloney was the third star with a goal and an assist. Not really gonna go through that. We didn't score a goal. There were a few. F there were several fights. It's the. It's close to the eighties. That's gonna be every game, as we saw last year with my uh, Ellie King save. Oh, with payment as a memorable game, he had a hat trick against the Atlanta Flames. Oh, all right. Coach reports on new players. All right, Don Nagbor uh, should be getting better, hopefully. All right, that's uh, the, the important part here. The training camp development report, that's kind of important. That's where you see, you know, if your players are getting better. All right, so Steve Alley got a uh, team player. Okay, 2701 stick checking for Ray Addison. That's good, that's good. We, we need that. Jeff Brubaker got better. Greg Carroll a little bit. Dave the Bowl a little bit. Dave Given plus one aggression plus two team player plus one temperament. Okay, okay. Marty Au getting a little bit better. Mark Howe getting better. He's already really good. Dave Inkpen. Okay. So some uh, some of those players that like getting those little pluses might help them <laughs> to uh, get over the hump and get. NHL spots. Bernie Johnston getting a little bit better. Ke Kevin Kevin Kemp. Well, don't know why that was hard for me to read. Uh, Charles looks uh, getting better. Don Nagbor getting better. He's the guy we just signed. Ray Newfeld getting better. Mark Renault getting better. Gordy Roberts getting a little bit better. Mike Rogers getting a little bit more aggressive. M. F. Sherman. Now, the, the guy I'm interested in is the guy that I traded for, which I completely forgot his name already. Uh, well, he's not here, so that, that's not good. I was hoping he would get some points that would make him a 10 at least. All right, so we have sold 7,627 tickets, season tickets. So yeah, that, that guy here, Boynak, didn't get any better. So he might not start in the NHL, but with the points in the right spot, he could have been a 10 and stay at home and, you know, find himself on the third pair. All right, so we have, what, two preseason games left to go? Yep, so we're gonna host the Vancouver Canucks here. Let's take a look at the Canucks. Of course, they don't have Pavel Bure. Wrong era. 
Uh, let's see here. They have uh, Gary Bromley and Glenn Anlin in it. So Anlin, five-star goaltender. So they have the goaltending, that's for sure. Uh, Dennis Kearns, Bob Mano, Aaron Schnepps, uh, Lars Lindgren, Kevin McCarty, uh, Larry Goodenow, Kurt Fraser, Yeri Gillis, Don Lever, Ron Settlebauer, Brad, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Brad Gasoff. Uh, Thomas Graydon, Chris Odolifson, Bill Derlago, Drew Callender, Jacques Lemaire that they just signed under our nose. I should have offered him more money. We're on free agents, you have to offer more money. It's your own players that you drafted that it doesn't matter. I'm rusty. Uh, Gary Lupo, Rick Blight, Stan Schmill, Rick Vive, and Chuck Arneson. Right, so they have a few good players for sure. Uh, let's see what happens. Glenn Anlin in net for the Canucks, so they're going with the heavy merchandise here. John Garrett in net for us. Are we going to see a win in preseason for the Whalers? Oh, we do! An 8 3 win here against the Vancouver Canucks. Nobody saw that coming, especially me. All right, we got outshot 42 to 30. Mark Howe with a great game. He had a goal and two assists. It was a first star. Mike Rogers, second star with two goals. And uh, Steve Alley was the third star with a goal and an assist. 6,598 people in attendance for this surprising win. All right, Canucks scored first in the first period. It was 1-0 after 1. Then they made it 2-0 at the start of the second period. It was 2-0 Vancouver at that point. Then Mark Howe scored on the power play from Greg Carroll and Blaine Stockton. Then Mike Rogers from Nick Fotsiu and Ray Newfeld. Then Steve Alley from Mark Howe and Rick Hutchinson. And then Dave Keon from Jordy Douglas and Marty Howe. Yes, there's Mark Howe and Marty Howe on my team. And Gordy Howe, of course. So Gordy Howe played with two of his sons on the weather which was one of the big setting points for that team all right then in the it was 4-2 waiters heading into the third period vancouver made it 4-3 but then we scored four more goals mike rogers scored short-handed from steve alley and mark out and bob stevenson from gordy roberts and dave the ball blaine stockton on the power play from al sims and greg carroll and then dave keon from ray allison it was an 8-3 victory for the waiters and wow no fighting in this game look at that it was quite a gentleman game red light stays on for dave christian with the jets he had a hat trick against the toronto maple leafs a strong night for lanny mcdonald in that same game he also had a hat trick and i remember for al secord in boston he had three goals and an assist against the quebec nordiques and finally, we are playing our last preseason game at home against the Buffalo Sabres. Right, we, uh, not waiters, Sabres have uh, Don Edwards and Bob Sove in it. Uh, they have Richie Dunn, Bill Att, uh, Jerry Korab, Larry Playfair, Jim Sconefield, Mike Ramsey, and John Van Buxmeer on D. And up front they have Rick Dudley, they have Rick Martin, Craig, Craig Ramsey, Dave Schultz, Jacques Richard, Tony McKegney, Don Luce, Gilbert Perrault, Andre Savard, Derek Smith, Bob McLennan, Danny Gare, Rick Sailing and Alex Tidy. All right, so that's the Buffalo Sabres. Fairly good team, better than ours. Don Edwards is going to be a net for Buffalo, and Al Smith is going to be a net for the Hartford Waiters. Oh, it's three nothing victory! Look at us. So we finished the preseason calendar with an 8-3 victory and then a shutout, a 3 0 win against the Buffalo Sabres. We outshot Buffalo 30 to 22 
Uh, Andre Lacroix was the first star of the game. He had two assists. Mark or Mattial uh, was the second. That was Mark. Was the second star with a goal. And Gordy Roberts was the third star with an assist. Six thousand six hundred and sixty-seven people in attendance for this game. And uh, it was fighting in the first period. Blaine Stockton fought Danny Gare. But there was no scoring. Then in the second period, we scored all of our goals. Ray Newfeld scored unassisted. Then Gordy Al scored from Andre Lacroix and Gordy Roberts. And then Mark Al from Andre Lacroix and Jordy Douglas. It was 3 0 after two. There was a fight between Jeff Brubaker and Dave Schultz. And then in the third period, uh, no scoring, but uh, another fight between Ray Newfeld and Dave Schultz. Of course, Dave Schultz was known for doing that, so so he's doing that. Oh, somebody got hurt for the North Stars. Bobby Smith. 21-year-old Bobby Smith is going to miss three months with a torn flexor tendon in his elbow. And the Minnesota North Stars is the first team we're going to be facing in October here. Right, so let's go ahead and advance here one more. Is Winnipeg to, looking to move Ula Suck, Bill Ula Suck? Players about to be waived. Nobody. Something tells me if if I have no players that, that are about to be waived, I probably shouldn't be getting the email. But you know, that's just me. All right, uh, what do we want to do here? Yeah, I think that I think I'm gonna go ahead and stop here for today. So I did my uh, lengthy introduction. Uh, we looked at the team, did the preseason and everything. I'm gonna need to look at the team a lot more in depth, and that's gonna take a while. Uh, usually, I like to do that off screen. Uh, for some people, it might be fun to look at you know 47 players one by one and look at their strengths and weaknesses and everything. Uh, but I'm gonna do that on my own. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here for today. Uh, I'm gonna be back and we're gonna go ahead and continue this challenge until I fail horribly or that I succeed uh, majestically. Uh, but uh, either way, we are going to do, be doing this again. As usual, I don't have a set schedule. Uh, so if you're new to the stream and you want to be notified whenever I go online, uh, the best way to do that is to subscribe. I'm not doing that to fish for subs or nothing like that. It's literally all I am. I don't have a set schedule. So uh, that's going to be it for today. So, well, that was uh, ARG that's uh, back from the the nether or something uh, glad to have seen everybody at least see a little eye here and as usual i will be uploading this to my youtube channel as well in case you missed the stream and well like they say thank you for being here and until next time thank you